Here are some final stuff that I want to show you in i3. First, how you can bind a program to a specific shortcut. You type in bind sysm, then your modifier key. And if you notice, I use here mod2. And in this case, this is the win key or super key. And then you add plus and the key to which you want to bind your program. And then you just type exit and the name of the program. So if I save this and restart the config, now when I press win key, Key and E. Dolphin will be opened but on a third desktop because here I have a sign that the Dolphin always opens on the third desktop. And since I already had the Dolphin open, it just opened another one. To auto start a program, you just type in this line where this is the name of the program. And by default, the key binding for starting a launcher is control space. And then you get this little window, and here on this circle, you get the settings. You can change the hotkey here, launch it to login just in case you have some other either desktop environment or whatever. And you can here define some uh, shortcuts. You have of course extensions for it, but I won't be covering you launcher in this video, maybe sometimes later if somebody is interested. You can also set themes for you launcher and here is how you install it. So basically you just copy this line and you go to your bash bit because this is a bash command. And now installed Catpuchin Mocha theme for U launcher. And when you start it and theme, there is Catpuchin Mocha Blue. If you don't see this at first try, you can just restart the U launcher. And now when I start it, it's very nice. The reason I, why I used U launcher is because the menu doesn't pick up the Flatpak uh, desktop files, and this one does. But now I don't really care because I don't use Flatpaks anymore. So it's up to you you want to use. The next option is workspace auto back and forth yes and this is one of my most used features in i3. So what does this do? Let's say I'm editing a file here on my workspace for and then I just quickly want to just go to web and search for something and I find it and then I go back to my workspace. The whole this time I was just pressing my modifier for. So what it basically does is go to your last workspace you used and then get back to the one from which you started. So again, I'm typing here something. I press modifier 4. I'm here looking for what I want. And then I press again modifier 4 and I'm back where I was. This is especially useful when you are working between two workspaces a lot. To change your keyboard layout, this is the line that you type in. This is a little program that you can set keyboard layout in uh, X. And in most distribution, it's just called set X key bmap. For instance, I'm on US layout, but let's say I want to change to creation layout. I can just save the file, reload the config, and when I switch and try to type something, I get the creation keyboard layout. But I will leave it at US because that's what I'm used to. To list which layouts are supported by that X bmap, you can type in this command, and here you will get the whole list. And as you can see, there are a lot of supported formats. You just choose your preferred one. You can enter the full screen in i3 with modifier F and now the application is full screen and modifier F to just exit full screen. You can also make windows floating in i3 and you do that with modifier shift and space and when you press it you will automatically see the window shrink and you can hold modifier and right click to resize the window and in modifier left click to move the window so you can move it like this and resize it with your mouse if you want to make windows start as floating you can just go to your config file and enter this line where keypass xc is like in the previous video you find the the name uh, of the class with xprop go to the application click this plus sign on it then go back and here you can see the name of the class and you can do this for any application and since i have configured that xpass is always run on desktop 9 it will always run on desktop 9 only now it will be open as floating and if for some reason you want to have it uh, again full space just press shift modifier space and that's it if you don't want to 
show this icons in the tray you can add this line under the bar and when you reload your config file they are gone also you can make this task bar transparent and if you have a title bar it will be transparent as well and you do this by adding this line and one more thing as you can see background here has the base color so if i go to the beginning of my file base is defined as this color to make it transparent you add two letters and cc is 80 percent transparency so basically on this page you have a hex value for every percentage of transparency that you can define and it's always the same you just add it to the end of the color and you write these two letters or numbers or or whatever it is now when i save file reload the config you can see that my taskbar is a little tr transparent you can put here whatever you like and of course for transparency to work you have to have pycom running i installed pycom during my first video so if you missed it you can go to my first video and see all the programs that i installed this is pretty much all that i used when i was using i3 this is the last video in the series of i3 that i'm gonna make if you have some questions please let me know down in the comments i can make another video but for now this is it and if someone tells you that i3 is telling window manager for beginners you tell them that they don't know what they are talking about because such print and to do with Windows, whatever you want, is something that only i3 has. And that's all.